In the introduction, section three. Peter, faith, and John, love, constitute the double winning combination. Peter, James, right judgment, and John constitute the triple winning combination. Why must James, right judgment, be taken up to the Mount of Transfiguration with Peter, faith, and John, love? Because in order to be transfigured, changed, a man, a mind, must change his judgment, his verdict about himself. There's an old television program before you kids were born, and it was titled, The Verdict is yours. Say that. The is yours. Say it again. The is you see, you have within you as one of your faculties of mind, judgment. But that judgment must become spiritual. It must become righteous. Every man lives under the verdict of his own self-judgment. Wow. I'm going to say this again. Write it in your heart. Write it on paper. Borrow something to write it on. Shout this back after me. Every man, Every man. lives under the judgment. Of his own verdict about himself. See, that's your James faculty. That's your judgment faculty. Not only that, this tells you that you have the power of judgment. And if you do not like the verdict that has been handed down, you used to be around where they handed those things down. If you don't like it, you have the power to change the verdict. You do not have to serve out a lifelong sentence of poverty, a sickness, a weakness. And this is judgment. Here, listen, listen to judgment again. Let the weak say, what, is he, what are you doing there? You are pronouncing a new judgment. You are pronouncing a new verdict upon yourself. Let the poor say, I am rich. What are you doing there? You are pronouncing another judgment, another verdict. If you don't like the sentence that you have, you can change it. You don't have to sit in a jail of poverty. You don't have to lie in a penitentiary of sickness. Glory to God. You don't have to live in a dungeon of depression. You have the power of right judgment. Let the weak say, Say it again. I want you to understand your power of right judgment. Now, Hyde works with faith. Hyde works with love. And I may not go much further in this lesson today. It may take another five months. But I'm going to have you exercise now your power of right judgment. That's a judgment. That's a verdict. You see, look on us. Hear this. Most people think and live under other people's judgment, under the verdict that somebody else has passed upon them. Too many black people and minorities live under the judgment and the verdict of the sociologist. You see, now that's the misuse of the, of the judgment faculty. Well, uh, you are socially deprived. No way. I cross out that judgment. <laughs> the verdict is mine. Come on, let me hear you say the verdict is mine. I'm going to have right judgment around here. 
I want you to read the reference from the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary. Do that at home. That's a lot of research and reference work. If you don't have one of those dictionaries, get one at the book stand while they last. Before we stand up and actually do this, this is what we're going to do. We're going to spend the rest of this sermon, maybe the next 10 minutes, who knows, or 10 hours, putting this to work. But James is a form, is the English form of Jacob. Back in the Old Testament, Jacob meant supplanter. Why? Because he usurped his brother's blessing. He found a way to change his name. He answered to a different name and got a different result. The father asked him, who are you? Now you see, that's where judgment comes. The theologians never understood this. They thought it was a dirty trick. But the fact is, the judge of the whole universe yes. is always asking you, who are you? And the verdict is yours. It means, what is your name? What is your nature? Oh my God, that's carte blanche. And it's right there where you're to rush in and let the weak say, I am strong. And then the judge of the universe. Yes. What's that final thing that they write up in a decree, isn't it? Yes. After the verdict has been announced, after judgment has been passed, the court writes a decree. Yes. And if you have said, I'm a guilty SOB, the decree says, handcuff them and drag them off. <laughs> Listen, some of you have been answering to the wrong name. You see, because you, you know what you get? You know what you get in the, in the, before the tribunal of the universe? You get what belongs to your name. That's why faith said to the lame man, I will give you such as I have. And what is it that I have? The name. I have the name of Jesus Christ. I have the nature of divine sonship. I have the nature of divine oneship. Glory to God. That's my judgment. Who are you? I am the Christ, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Listen. But you see, this is the thing about it. And please listen to this. Please hear this. This is why in many ways the Gospels, the Bible, tell us the same thing in so many different ways. This is why the evangelists, they don't know it. But this is why the evangelists tell us to confess Christ. You see, that is your name. But you don't get the benefit until you confess. You have to confess the name. Don't confess the crime. Confess the name. Oh, I, come on. Catch up with me here. Catch up with me, somebody. Catch up with me, somebody. Don't confess poverty. Confess the name. Confess the rich name. Confess the rich man's name. Say to the two people sitting next to you, who are you and what do you want? (laughs) 
And you see, who you are depends upon what you get. Because somewhere in the statutes of the universe, somewhere in the courthouse of heaven, in the bureau of records, everything on earth and in heaven has been deeded to the Son. And the moment you confess the name of the Son, all that I have is yours. 